Good evening. This is the Red Hook Town Board meeting of July 12th, 2016. Would you be kind enough to join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> so we start to, uh, tonight's meeting, the first meeting of the month, as we always do. It's with the uh, supervisor's report, and it's in your packets. I will read for you the balances. This is the report ending June 30th, 2016. Um, the Town of Red Hook, an opening balance of $5,096,003.89, with receipts of $529,855.99, disbursements of $333,789.37. That leaves us a closing balance for the month of $5,287.70 with, uh, sorry, $70.51. Do you have any questions about the supervisor's report? Mm -hmm. If not, I would entertain a motion to approve it. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. We also have in our packets a couple of budget adjustments that Ann Conway has put together for us. We have uh, taken uh, some funds out of the, our contingent account. As you know, we've had a great deal of work done on our parking lot. Um, we've had the highway to department, which uh, I hope you will agree has done a wonderful job of preparing the um, grassy and natural areas uh, of the lot. Uh, they brought in some stone along the building and topsoil and, and they've done some great work removing all of the overgrowth that was on the trees. Um, Can we introduce our highway supervisor to the audience? Yes, our highway yeah. supervisor is here, <laughs> Teresa Burke. We're acknowledging you for the camera and for the students here. And um, we really appreciate the work that they've done. Um, we've had to take some money out of the contingent account and put it towards a uh, building and grounds. You'll see that that's that appropriation. $7,395 for that account. Otherwise, they're very um, uh, minor uh, changes with the exception of the request from Hank Van Paris, uh, the chair of our water board, and that's to move uh, $10,000 over to the general maintenance supply account. Is there any questions about the budget adjustments? Do we need to do anything about the rec park? Uh, you know, taking money out of the capital fund that was in an email or something to me today. Is that for next month? Um, that's for next month. Okay. We're going to do that in the next meeting on the 27th. <coughs> but we will talk about uh, rec park appropriations later on. Um, so, uh, would we like to have a motion to approve the budget adjustments? So moved. Okay, thank you, Jim. Uh, Second. Thank you, Sarah. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Okay. Um, we now have our town clerk's report, Sue McCann. Town clerk report for June of 2016. Total local shares remitted to supervisor as revenue, $1,546.24. Amount remitted to New York Ag and Markets for the spade and neutered program, $57. Amount remitted to New York Department of Health for marriage licenses, $247.50. And amount remitted to New York Environmental Conservation, $269.26 for a total state, county, and local revenue of $2,120. Mm -hmm. 
Pursuant to section 27 sub 1 of the town law, I hereby certify that the foregoing is a true and full statement of all fees and monies received by me, Sue McCann, town clerk, town of Redwood, during the period stated above in connection with my office. And I also have our uh, abstract for June of 2016. And what the abstract is, it, it advises um, the public of the money that was spent and the vouchers that were used to do it. So it's voucher number 205253 through 20643. Out of the general A fund came $97,904.15. Out of the general B fund, $27,222.62. Out of the highway DB fund, $18,462.58. The lighting fund, $2,165. Um, SW Water O&M, $3,651.06. Uh, community Development Block Grant due to A, $500. So the total abstract that was spent was $149,905.41. And I hereby certify that the vouchers numbered 20525 through 20643 processed in the month of June 2016 or an accurate reporting of the abstract approved for payment by the town board. So we can town clerk. Thank you very much, Sue. Is there a motion to approve the town clerk's report? So move. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Um, we have a public comment period is the next item on the agenda, and I have to apologize. I understand the agenda on our website. The link is, is not working properly. Um, we've uh, notified our webmaster for that, and maybe, Sue, we could, if we could remember between the two of us to check the link there, maybe uh, yeah, okay. the day or the day yeah. of. And yeah, because I didn't know until... So Linda, Linda advised us at like so quarter after seven. So actually, I scanned and forwarded the agenda to you, Linda. <laughs> so we, we thank you very much for being patient with our technical difficulty. Um, we do have, at this point, it's uh, a time for public comments. If you have any public comments on the agenda, please feel free to come up to the microphone. Does it you like... be on the agenda? Oh, no, it does no. not. It can be about anything. That's yeah. the beauty of it. Yeah. I want to be uh, known that I am very pleased with all the work that's been done in the parking lot, the bathrooms, the front door, and everything to make it handicap accessible. Thank you very much. Thank you. The other thing is I had sent you a letter about a, a fire at, uh, across from my place mm -hmm. at uh, Papa's uh, best batch, and I was wondering where we are on that. Yeah, it's been referred to our uh, code enforcement officer, and he is doing the initial investigation right now. So hopefully we'll have something back to you in the next few days, okay. if not, certainly by next week. Because the operation is still going on, and... Right, and your concern. Yes, yeah. smoke all the time. Okay. Uh, and it's unattended. Okay. Which is not according to DEC rules. Okay. Right? Thank, Thank you. you, Linda. All right, are there any other uh, public comments? If not, we will uh, move right on to agenda item number one, which is a very uh, nice agenda item. We have uh, a wonderful crowd here of young, attractive people, and I guess, Paul Marienthal, you're going to explain to us who they are, or maybe they'll yeah. introduce themselves as well. Sure. Okay. Can I do it from here? You, you can. I can. You're my allowed voice, enough, I I can, think, my right. voice will carry. Um, hi, I'm Paul Marienthal. I'm the Dean for Social Action at Bard College. And I my office is in the Center for Civic Engagement. And we have received a grant from the State Department, the United States State Department, to bring this wonderful, fabulous group of 20 students from the Middle East to study civic engagement in the United States. It's called the Study of the United States Institute. This occurs at many colleges around the country uh, every year. There are about 20 or 25 of these going on right now. Uh, we were fortunate enough to win one of these grants and have the privilege of working with these students. We're doing 
many case studies in the Hudson Valley, uh, looking at the Clearwater, looking at the, the walkway over the Hudson, uh, learning about radio and how to make radio shows, um, and going then going to New Orleans to do a an oral history of the neighborhood that the, the college has been attending for years. Um, we are about two and a half weeks into our our institute. It's a five week long uh, every day. It's five weeks every day, right? How are you guys holding up? You guys are holding up good. Um, and they come from, these students come from five countries in the Middle East, Tunisia, Egypt, Jordan, Palestine, and Iraq. Uh, and I would be happy to have them introduce themselves. Uh, That'd be great, Paul. Great. Um, and, and in addition to that, uh, if you wouldn't mind telling us not only um, your name and your, your country, but also what your major is that you're studying in, in your respective uh, universities. And how about, one short thing that you've noticed here, while you've been here, real short. Why don't we start in the back and we'll go that way. Hello everyone, my name is Momen and I'm from Palestine. And I study accounting at University of Jordan. And one thing that I noticed here in the United States is that there are diversity in everything, like a lot of people and a lot of origins. And uh, that's really cool because I like diversity in, uh, in life. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Shadan. I'm from Jordan. I study biomedical engineering. Uh, one thing I've noticed about the US here is that the public transportation isn't easy as <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Alfa from Tunisia, North Africa. So I study medicine in Tunisia. Uh, one thing that I've noticed uh, about American people is that they're so nice and friendly. Like whenever like somebody's walking by you in the street, they'd be like, "Hi, hello," mm -hmm. and like maybe I don't know in Tunisia or in Europe it's different because like why are you why are you talking to me like? <laughs> so people like here are so amazing and friendly. Hello, my name is Manel. I'm um, from Tunisia and I'm studying physical therapy. Well, um, what I've noticed here is that um, um, American people give importance to anything and um, uh, they uh, try to um, uh, to help you and to uh, to push you to do what you want, uh, whatever the idea. I mean, even if it's a tiny idea, they will try to help you to improve it. Thank you. Hey everyone, I'm Zainab, I'm from Iraq and I'm a medical student and uh, what I noticed here is that people deal with each other and they don't care about the way you look and uh, what your appearance and uh, what your outfit uh, represent uh, and I talk to a lot of people and people and especially at Bard are so amazing and nice. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Nora Palangin. I'm actually a Bard uh, alum, and I work with the Center for Civic Engagement. Um, one thing I've noticed with um, with our group here is how warmly the community has embraced their presence, and I just want to say thank you. I'm from Blanche Stores. We're here in New York. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Amal, I'm from Tunisia, I'm a medical student. One thing I noticed here is how clean the place is and the streets are. Like I've seen a scene in New York that uh, marked me when, when a man uh, like um, put, put his waist in the street, someone who didn't know him just said, can you please take that? So if this happened in another country, it would be really weird, but here like everybody cares because the, how clean the street is, is affects the people themselves. They can feel it. So they do actually love their countries and their streets. Thank you. Hello, I'm Rami from Palestine. I'm studying English and French. What I've noticed here is that you find respect from everyone in the U.S. Hello, my name is Zelda. I just graduated from Bard in May. I was a political studies major and I'm working with this group as a student ambassador for Bard. One thing I've noticed is um, the willingness to ask really difficult questions and <coughs> to tackle those questions as a group has been really impressive. Hello, 
Uh, my name is Harry. I am Harry Johnson. I am a rising senior at Bard College. I study sociology. I'm working with the program as a fellow for the summer. And one thing that I've noticed from these students that I've got the chance to work with is that you can pack so much energy into such small people, which is <laughs> kind of amazing. You know, they, they have very long days and they never quit. So. Uh, my name is Sahib Safi. I'm a sixth year medical student at Lazar University in Gaza, Palestine. Uh, one thing that I have noticed here is how much time is important and how much each second in your life means something and it can change even the world with those letter seconds. Thank you. Uh, good evening. I'm Tala from Jordan. I'm a fifth year medical student. Uh, the thing that uh, I like most here is the acceptance uh, by the American people of other people coming from different countries, other cultures. There's a mutual respect and I really uh, was fascinated by that. Hello, my name is Ayam from Jordan. I study industrial engineering. And one thing I've noticed from here that all the students and all the youth are engaged in sports activities. Like all the people I know from Bart, like into swimming and into hiking and so many other different activities like basketball. And I really love that because like sports um, um, gives enthusiasm to a human being and to the youth. Hello, I'm Hassan from Iraq and I study medicine. And uh, one thing that I've noticed there is that if you are a student and you have an idea, there are there is someone who will uh, try to help you to show your talent and encourage you to find your pathway and uh, uh, give you the, the steps to be more uh, important person in the community. That's it. <coughs> Uh, hi, my name is Felicia. I go to Bard. Uh, I study piano and human rights. And one thing that I've noticed in this incredible group of uh, students is an amazing sense of collaboration and a curiosity to explore various methods of collaboration. Hi there, I'm Lila. I work with Paul in the TLS office. Um, and one thing I've noticed about this group is how hospitable they all are. I can't tell you how many invitations I've already received and visit them all in their home countries. <laughs> and I'll be using every one of those invitations. You are Yeah, so it's Asala from Palestine. I study pharmacy and I love to hear the, the smiley faces and the calmness in their faces as well. They look so calm. I don't know. Maybe the nature is so helpful. <laughs> We're actually very tired. That's <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Fatma from Tunisia. So I'm a computer science uh, engineering student. Uh, I'm very impressed by the cultural diversity here and how the citizens have contributed in shaping the U.S. history. Hi, I'm Amr from Egypt. I'm studying pharmacy in Alexandria University. One thing I have noticed is like, the freedom of people to express their identities and their, uh, their orientations, what they believe in, and they have to, to, to express that freely. They don't, they don't have restriction. Other things I was so proud uh, of that when I hear it uh, for Mrs. Susan Weir, they are talking about the budget incent, how the transparency in governmental administration is something very important that we missed in our countries that you because this is, is the right for people to know about everything. So this is was I got shocked. Like, yeah, this is amazing. Thank you. Um, hi, uh, my name is Margaret Khali, and I'm uh, from Iraq. I study petroleum engineering at University of Baghdad. And uh, the one thing I noticed, which I agree with my friends, is how people are nice and friendly with you, and they motivate you even in the simplest things. Thank you. Hi, I'm Madison. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, the photographer for this event, um, so I only catch them in glimpses. I'm not with them as often as all of the fellows are who are here, but whenever I am with them, which is like in these like little fragments, um, there's endless positivity and um, welcomeness and hope, and the energy levels are always up, and they're always ready for more, and I know that they're busy all day, all the time, and they're probably the hardest working individuals I've ever had the privilege to meet. So. <laughs> Hello, I'm Riham from Egypt. I'm a medical student. One thing that I have noticed here is that uh, despite all this great diversity between people, they are acting so um, smoothly with each other and not, um, none uh, has been interfering with each other at first uh, as long as he didn't harm him. 
Good evening, my name is Sarah. I'm from Egypt. I study pharmacy. One of the things that I have noticed here uh, is um, it rains heavily. We have no rain in raining in our uh, country, so it's something amazing. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ahmed Gad from Egypt. A lot of things that I noticed here, how to invest in ideas, how to invest in youth and, and, and people, uh, how poor people deal with us and give us all the knowledge we, we seek to. And uh, also people here in uh, New York know their rights and their duties. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Nice. And your studies, what, what do you say? I you studied petroleum, petroleum refinery and petrochemical engineering. Okay. Thank you. Very Hello everyone. My name is Maram and I'm from Palestine. Uh, I'm English language teaching method student. The thing I like and uh, I notice and I like about people in America that they really work hard to change this world in a better place. And the evidence I have that I'm here attending one of a uh, very organized meeting here. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mohamed from Kurdistan, Iraq. Uh, I'm a medical uh, student, uh, five grade. One thing I noticed uh, about the part uh, course, I see how the, how the education are at Bar College is effective uh, and uh, success and make uh, everything comfortable for a student to study and to be successful uh, leader of community. Yeah. Thank very you. Very nice. Well, thank you all very much. Uh, it was really terrific to hear what you're all doing and, and thank you very much for your kind words about our community. You know, we're, we're very proud of it as well and that's why we uh, volunteer or almost volunteer, we do get paid, but if you looked at the paychecks, they're not so big. <laughs> um, but we do it because we care so much about um, making our contributions. And actually, Red Hook's a, a really fine example between Bard College, our schools, our volunteers, of a community that comes together to really try and produce the best uh, place uh, for folks to live. So. Your, uh, you know, this program is one of many that Bard College does that's really terrific. Um, I know that the State Department has a, another a segment of this program where the scholars uh, come over. I had an opportunity to meet with them a couple of weeks ago, and that was also terrific. And they came from countries from Australia to Cameroon to Iceland. I mean, it was really quite a, quite a group. Um, we hope that you enjoy the meeting. It won't be very exciting, but um, I will tell you that this uh, time of year is an important time of year for local governments to go out and get grant monies from higher levels of government. There are uh, seasons, if you will, in June and July where a lot of the application deadlines are due. And so tonight you'll see we'll be discussing uh, a few of those applications, both at this meeting we have at the previous couple of meetings and also at the next meeting uh, later on in July. So uh, thank you very much for coming and uh, we really enjoyed hearing about uh, you know who you are and, and uh, hopefully we'll all come visit you one of these days. So thanks very much. Can I just say um, a welcome also? I've had the opportunity to um, go to a couple events with these students and they're just wonderful um, people to have here and I, I want to thank Bard for including myself and some people from the library and village trustees and other people from around Red Hook in your program um, to talk about civic engagement in our local context. I know you're talking about all kinds of ways people are, are engaged civically but it was really wonderful to share your experiences and our experiences and find that we have so many different things that we are, are concerned about and also so many of the same things, you know, when it comes right down to it. And so that was really cool to see. And, um, and I know Red Hook is very, very proud to have you. So thanks for being here. And anytime you're in our community, I hope you feel welcome. Thank you. And we from the college appreciate the reciprocation. It, it really matters yeah. to, to make the connection with the town. Okay. Well, thank you again. And we are going on to item number two, which is reorganization. Um, you have an email. We have one of our planning board members who has stated his intention to resign. I think he's going to submit a, an official resignation letter. He's uh, quite busy with his practice. And um, we'll be looking to make that replacement um, in August, his uh, resignation will be effective after the August 1st meeting. 
we do have an alternate in place. We can um, consider that um, when we get the recommendation from the planning board chair. Um, we also have, uh, we had some discussion um, about having a communications committee, and Sarah has uh, uh, today drafted something for us to take a look at. I haven't had a chance to really um, read it today. It was sort of crazy getting last minute stuff done. But um, this is something we should certainly try and put on our next meeting's agenda and get some uh, input from some of the folks mentioned here. Do we, uh, does somebody write a letter to Brian uh, thanking him for his service? Uh, we haven't done that yet because we haven't had his official resignation. Well, what we, we do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we do that. I kind of sent an email today <coughs> requesting the resignation letter. In fact, in So, Sarah, can we put the discussion for the communications committee on the agenda for next month? Would that be all right? Sure. Okay. And so, if you have any comments or thoughts on, uh, What's been provided, please let Sarah and others know. Um, item number three, um, George uh, Hop, would you uh, like to come up and uh, give us a uh, sort of a quick rundown of? We discussed this at a meeting a few months ago, um, yes, we but did. we didn't we didn't really go over. Um, sort of the design. Does everybody have a, a plan? Anyone out there would like to look share at the group there a little bit? Well, well, there's a copy, I think, in the blue folder, if you would like to look at this map, that's this diagram. Mm -hmm. So this is a proposal to plant some trees and bushes. And George, can you can there we go. Clean up a section in between two roadways, right. uh, post road, and the, the whole idea here is to uh, put a planting in the hamlet of Upper Red Hook, where Old Post Road North runs into uh, Route Nine, right, sort of adjacent to uh, Devereaux. So if you, okay. if you, there's about, well, there's a long narrow strip there as Old Post Road uh, is quite close and parallels Route Nine. The land belongs to DOT. Uh, there's about a third of an acre on the extreme north end that would be look suitable for a planting. Uh, so I, we, the committee uh, measured up the area, um, and what we used to come up with species to plant and a plan. It's really pretty much cookie cutter. Uh, Central Hudson gives you uh, a guideline for planting uh, various species, plants that you can plant underneath the uh, underneath power lines. And those plants only get about 20 feet high. Uh, then there's plants that you can plant 15 feet from the power lines. Uh, those get a little bit higher, up to about 25 feet high. Uh, and then there's other plants uh, that you need to be 45 feet away so, uh, and so uh, all of that is in their guideline. So using that uh, and also using the Schichtel's uh, catalog which is the place where we get our uh, <coughs> stock from came up with uh, a list of uh, basically three species that we want to put in there. Uh, I've if you take a look at the diagram, uh, the right of way on Old Post Road is 25 feet from the center. Uh, the road is approximately uh, 22 feet wide. So uh, from the edge of the pavement in 14 feet, I made a mark there. And uh, from the power lines, you know, I'm 15 feet away. So there, that yellow shaded area is the area that's possible to, to plant with the uh, plants indicated by Central Hudson that you can be 15 feet away. Thought multi-trunk species are the best because they're not really going to get that tall. Okay. Uh, went with shad blow, it's a native species, it, uh, you know, it looks great in the fall as far as fall color goes. It gets a, a, well, it's like a blueberry. 
Uh, birds like them. Actually, anybody can eat them. Um, it has a little bit more of a stone in it than does blueberry. Uh, they can also handle uh, moisture, which the north end of this project, there's a catch basin there, and uh, that's kind of low land, so I kind of thought they'd do well there. Uh, the uh, Winter King Hawthorn, which we're just going to put one of those in, that's a great tree that's uh, recommended for uh, tight spaces. They use them in, in sit long city streets. Uh, it has a, a berry that hangs on into the winter. In fact, it will hang on to February if the birds don't eat them. So it gives a little winter is interest. In fact, actually, it's a species that has interest four seasons of the year uh, because it has a, a nice bloom in June, actually May to June. Um, has interesting bark, interesting foliage, and, and then the berries hang on, uh, so it gives a little winter interest. The fringe tree is a very interesting tree. It's, uh, I had never seen one, actually. I read about it, and online it said, boy, this is just the greatest tree ever. Why don't we see them all over the place? Um, well, I finally saw one at Presby uh, Iris Garden down in uh, uh, New Jersey. It is sensational. The bloom on them is uh, late May to June. The bloom is white and just sensational. Uh, the foliage on the tree, kind of nondescript. Uh, winter foliage isn't much, but it also has a, a berry that hangs on that birds like. It's uh, a blue-black kind of a berry. Uh, so I thought a, a mass of those would, would look pretty good. So that's how we came up with the species. Uh, I've been down to see Chuck Walters at DOT. He indicated that for, for anyone to work on the DOT land, uh, we have to have a bond uh, or be covered by a bond, uh, which he said the town hopefully would do. Uh, I talked to Al Treza as far as digging out the stumps uh, with his backhoe, helping out the committee, and he'll do that. All we need is really the permission to go to work. Uh, any other questions? Uh, What's the amount of the bond? And uh, I think he said a million dollars. That's insurance. I think insurance. you're talking about insurance, right, insurance. which you would have an insurance policy. Um, and I believe Sue can check, yes. but I think you might not have to do the bond because you have, I believe, previously signed an undertaking well, yeah. with um, DOT. DOT. Okay. So for permit projects, and I think Teresa brought this over a couple of years ago, um, we have essentially a promise to uh, DOT to be responsible for our projects. And Teresa is okay with all this? Um, I have not yet had the opportunity to review this plan, so I had asked Robert if we had a little more time yeah. um, that Kathy and could come to the office and we could go over it and then just make sure that everything in our right of way is correct and um, if it is then there should be no issue I'm assuming you'll be planting in the fall correct and when is your order timed uh, I'd like to make put the order in as soon as possible to try and get the species that we want um, but it would it's usually a fall planting like October Okay, so in the next week or two, if you we want have, to make an appointment in my office, right. now that I have the plan, we can go over it, and I can uh, check it in my format, and I don't see that there'll be any issues. Okay. Okay. So, Hop, uh, if we did have a conditional approval that it meets with DOT's approval and also with a highway superintendent, that would be good enough for you to, to start the ball rolling? And I think so. I just need to okay. get the application in right. to Mr. Walters. Right. And I see from your plan, you're, you're planting you're avoiding the right of way, but we do want Teresa mm -hmm. to be okay with whatever you come up with um, as the final plan. So we'll, we'll make that a condition if that's okay, that it meets with our approval. Okay. Sounds fine. Um, so I don't have any other questions except to say thank you very much for doing all this because uh, if you look at the photos in that area, it certainly is in need of some improvement um, with the stumps and it's very unattractive right now. Um, and I think this will really add to, you know, that approach to the gateway. And I know how important that gateway is to you all. And hopefully we'll be making some changes, you know, besides just planting to 
that Hamlet area. So, do you need any other help from the board? I don't think so. I think okay. with Al and, and uh, okay. committee members, I think we'll probably be fine. Okay. Do you have some time in October? But mm -hmm. to confuse holes. But you know, I'll you want to get, you want to get a little dirt under your fingernails. Yeah, I'll, so that, I'll watch. I'll watch Treza. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> careful, careful what you've started. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, um, we uh, have a, a short environmental assessment form. Um, for those of you in the audience who are here studying local government, you should know that before we take any action, we have to study what we consider to be the impacts of that action. So uh, New York State has a regulation, State Envol Environmental Quality Review Act, where we assess the impacts on not only the environment, but on traffic and other issues related to the action that we're taking. So there are forms, and we fill out those forms, and we review those forms. And we try to uh, assess what the potential impacts may or may not be, and how we might best address them. In the case of this action, this is a very sort of small um, uh, action that is not likely to have any um, negative impacts because we're planting some bushes and some trees where there used to be bushes and trees and maintaining the property. But just so you understand some of the things that we do up here. Um, so we do have a uh, EAF that's been prepared to, for us by our engineers. Um, it's a short form and the project um, the name of the project is Old Post Road North and Route 9 project. Uh, Tree Preservation Commission wishes to provide landscaping improvements at the intersection. And you see the answers to um, the questions. And are there any questions you have on the results of the draft that's in front of you? Not me. Okay, um, so we shall establish the town of Red Hook as the lead agency. Notice we don't have a resolution to that effect. Um, Yeah. two resolutions. The first thing that I would like you to consider yeah. is after having reviewed the short environmental assessment form, if you could uh, authorize by motion the uh, supervisor to sign it. And then you have a uh, resolution approving a negative declaration for right. review and approval. Yeah. And then finally you have a resolution approving a property. Right. And um, based on the discussion, you might want to um, modify the second resolution approving the planting in section one to add language at the end of the first sentence um, subject to receipt of the DOT permit and review by the highway superintendent to meet the condition that we just discussed. Um, where are you suggesting? So this is in the okay. second resolution approving tree planting. Yeah. Number one, the town hereby authorizes application for a DOT mm -hmm. permit. Uh, approves the project subject to receipt of the DOT permit and yeah. review by the highway superintendent. Okay. If I could suggest that annotation. Okay. And then um, you could proceed again to start with the motion on the uh, EAF itself. Okay. Well, first to make the resolution to authorize the supervisor to sign the uh, mm -hmm. agreement. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <coughs> Bill, since you're moving motions, would you like to make a motion on the EAF? Adopting yes, the same motion on the EAF to uh, adopt the EAF as you've uh, read it. The NECDAC? The NECDAC. The NECDAC. Are we on to the NECDAC? Yeah, the EAF. Yeah, the EAF, where we adopt the negative declaration and we're reviewing it. So we're already on that one. Yeah. I'll just read this. <coughs> well, I propose a resolution adopting a negative declaration regarding tree planting in the Old Post Road near Devereaux Way, where it's in accordance with the forestry management plan prepared by the Tree Committee. The Tree Committee has proposed to apply for New York State Department of Transportation funding for a tree planting project for an area adjacent to Route 9 along Old Post Road south of Devereaux Way. 
as further described in a draft permit application on file with the uh, town clerk. And whereas a short environmental assessment form has been prepared dated July 12, 2016 and reviewed by the town board, and whereas the proposed project is an unlisted action under 6 New York CRR 17.4, and whereas no rare plants and animals or any significant natural habitats have been identified in the project area, the project site is not located in the vicinity of any archaeologically sensitive areas pursuant to New York State Historic Preservation Office GIS database, nor any site listed on the state or national registry of historic places. And whereas the planting plan takes into account required road setbacks for site distance and safety considerations, and whereas the town board has considered the criteria contained in our statutes and thoroughly analyzed all identified relevant areas of environmental concern, be resolved by the town board of the town of Reddick, Dutchess County, New York, that the town board hereby adopts a negative declaration with respect to the project, finding that the proposed action will not have a significant adverse impact on the environment and a draft environmental impact statement will not be prepared. I so move. Thank you, Bill. Second. Thank you, Jim. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, and then we have the resolution. Um, Jim, maybe you want to read it. I'll give you a chance to Thank you, Duke. get involved in this one, approving. Um, you don't want numbers to be good? No, I don't. I think we're in the 60s somewhere, right? Resolution number in the 60s. <laughs> um, resolution approving tree planting at Old Post Road near Devereaux Way. Whereas, in accordance with the forestry management plan prepared by the Tree Committee, the Tree Committee has proposed to apply for New York State DOT funding for a tree planting project for an area adjacent to Route 9 along Old Post Road south of Devereaux Way, as further described in a draft permit application on file with the town clerk. And whereas the proposed project is an unlisted action under 6 NYCRR 617.4 and 617.5, and the town board has adopted a negative declaration pursuant to section 6 NYCRR 617.7, and now therefore be it resolved by the town board of the town of Reddick, Dutchess County, New York, the town as follows. The town hereby authorizes the application for a New York State DOT permit for the project and here to approve the project subject to receipt of the DOT permit and review by our highway superintendent. The supervisor and the town's other officers, employees, and agents are hereby authorized and directed for and in the name of, on behalf of the town, to execute any documents that are necessary to facilitate the grant application. So moved. Thank you very much, Jen. I'll, I'll, or Sarah will second your resolution. Is there any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Where are you? There you are. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we also understand uh, when the time comes in the fall that you'll be planting, you and your commission will be planting a few trees out here with our new uh, area. We appreciate that. Thanks very much. Robert, I think um, we're going to rise and I'm going to go out and explain that whole process you do. to them and then we're okay. going to go to Holy Cow. Well, that's right. You're, you're going you're to miss uh, I, think, I think we should say it's almost embarrassing. You see all the trees we have in New York State and in the town of Redwood. And someone from Egypt mentioned you don't even have rain there all the time. But I mean, for this kind of work to be done by a municipality in the Hudson Valley, the volunteers, a couple of retired dentists, by the way, and a lot of you want to be a dentist someday, but. You know, volunteer work done in the community and, and uh, so much effort made just to plant a couple of trees. But that's important. And it will hopefully be important to you and your communities during your lives. Thanks. Okay. Well, thank you again for coming, all of you. And thank, we are going to talk a little bit more about Bart College in a minute. Uh, yes, I know, and we're going to wish. But Any we, understand, <laughs> we, we understand holy cow and its importance to the community as well. <laughs> Believe me, we do. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you all. Have a good Thank evening. You so Thank you all.
Place I was the director of development. Um, so one of my jobs is uh, to do fundraising for Montgomery Place, and it's a big job because anybody knows Montgomery Place. It has many, many needs. Um, so this is uh, our first round of applications to New York State under their consolidated funding application to ask for funding to help restore the farmhouse and the mansion house. The farmhouse um, is an interesting story that has probably been before you approximately three years ago, where Historic Hudson Valley, well, maybe it wasn't before you, I'm not sure, but um, Historic Hudson Valley applied to the same, uh, their EPF funds that come through New York State Office of Parks and Historic Preservation. Um, Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation. Um, and they, uh, they applied for funds to help restore the farmhouse and two of the cottages that are along Annandale Road. The work that was to end, they were granted, um, I believe it was $400,000. They completed the work on the two cottages, but found that it was a much more complicated, difficult project. There was serious foundation work. And so they redirected the funds that were going to go to the farmhouse, which was in desperate need at the time, uh, to complete the work on the cottages. So that was done. Um, and those now, the envelopes of all three of the cottages, in fact, on Annandale Road, have now been completely restored. And we will at some point be looking for, well, we are looking right now for funds to, um, to renovate the insides, since the insides of all three of those buildings are shells. So we are now going back recognizing that the state has already recognized what an important um, project this is. It is one of the four A.J. Davis buildings that's on the property. And if you look at it, you don't have to look too hard to see that a lot of the paint is peeling, the, um, the, a lot of the wood is exposed, there's rot, there's a chimney that was installed that needs to come down that was never a part of the original building. There's, um, I can tell you what else, uh, the asphalt shingles on the main roof are not original. The roofing needs to be completely removed, um, repaired. Rotted gutters and leaders need to be replaced with copper. The front porch roofing has worn through in several locations. Um, there's a roof leak in the rear mudroom. That's where this existing chimney is that needs to come down. Um, I mentioned the paint. Uh, so there's a lot of work that needs to get done, and in the last three years, the building obviously hasn't gotten in any better shape. It's only in more need. So that's the first project that we're, we're, we're asking for two, um, for one grant to help restore that building and then the mansion building. And I probably don't have to go in and tell you the historic significance of the mansion building. I think you all know that, but that is also a, another A.J. Davis building and one of his preeminent uh, examples of um, classical architecture. So 
the kind of work that needs to be done there, there, had, there really has not been a constant uh, maintenance program in the last, well, I, I don't know how long, but um, it has caused um, a variety of different kinds of uh, cosmetic and uh, other kind of damages that are then becoming structural damages. So we are need to repair roof claddings, gutters, spouts, flashing. Uh, the exterior wall surfaces will be tested for soundness and all instances of decay repaired and will be replaced. The paint coatings specified to match the intentions of Davis and his clients will be restored. Uh, leader outlets will be redesigned to channel storm runoff away from the foundation, uh, thereby reducing stress on the structural systems. Uh, monitors will be placed in interior spaces to ensure that these solutions are performing adequately. So uh, we're also looking at the hinging cracks on the West Porch Piers. They'll be thoroughly investigated. We will um, uh, replace ornamentation as it needs to be uh, replaced. We'll create a full set of replacement molds uh, that should be uh, to be created and stored on hand to facilitate replacement in the future. And the overall goal is to restore the exterior of the mansion to a sound, resilient condition while simultaneously developing a plan for regular maintenance and protocol for repairs as required. So um, it's pretty straightforward. We're asking um, in these grants, as you may know, we need a municipal endorsement. And so uh, we hope that you will agree and give us that endorsement for doing work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amy. I um, really appreciate your taking the time to provide us with both the summary report and also some photos of the work that obviously needs to be done. Um, as we know, because we're doing a bunch of these grants ourselves, uh, the, the complete application I know you're still working on, we, we also are working on um, full applications for some state grants as well. So I'm assuming we'll get a copy of that also before um, you forward on our, our resolution um, in support uh, of the work that you're doing. Um, just want to congratulate you on taking the job, taking it on, um, and obviously this is very important that these buildings be maintained properly. They're um, important to the community and we certainly appreciate uh, Bards keeping them open to the public and having access. Uh, we feel it's very much part of our our uh, family here um, in Red Hook. Um, the uh, pictures sort of speak for themselves as far as you know the, the particular areas that need to be replaced and like kind. And as, as I'm sure I've explained to you, once you do receive the grant before the work proceeds, we'll probably take a look at those plans and make sure that um, you know any review process uh, with the um, building department or with a design review committee that needs to take place does take place before the work is done. Um, but again, thank you so much for doing all this work to come off with upkeep of, of those properties. Um, Do you propose a resolution? All right. Well, it sounds like you want to propose a resolution. Anything, no, I think, uh, I think it's just really important. Um, it's, it's a great opportunity for partnership between the town and the bars and and more people that can, you know, be working towards the goal of maintaining this property better. Yeah. Well, so I would move a resolution dated uh, today, approving and endorsing an application by Bard College for a grant under the Environmental Protection Fund. Whereas, Bard College is applying to the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation for a grant under the Environmental Protection Fund for a park project to be located at Montgomery Place, a site located within the territorial jurisdiction of the town board of the town of Red Hook. And whereas, as a requirement under the rules of this program, said not-for-profit corporation must obtain the approval and endorsement of the governing body of the municipality in which the project will be located. Therefore, be it resolved by the town board of the town of Red Hook, as follows, the town board hereby approves and endorses the application of Bard College for a grant under the Environmental Protection Fund for a park project known as Farmhouse and Mansion Restoration Project and located within this community. 
and the supervisor and the town's other officers, employees, and agents are hereby authorized and directed for and in the name of and on behalf of the town to execute any documents that are necessary to facilitate the grant application. And I so move. Thank you, Bill. I'd like to second your uh, resolution. Is there any other uh, further discussion? No, I would just say your the narratives that were provided along with the you know the document that the town board received were very eloquent and easy to read and just like you, you get a lot of reports that are very dry and technical. This was very like the narrative flow was really wonderful and technical, so it was really interesting to read and and so yeah, I'm excited to see this go forward. I hope it does. Okay. okay. Terrific. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And so I'll follow up with you for that. We'll get you. We'll get you a signed resolution the next couple of days. Okay. Okay. Thanks, well, thank Amy. you very very much. Okay, if we could um, jump then to the first item in the grants update, it's all state grants, by the way, we're talking about today, tonight, tonight's meeting, and hopefully we'll be talking about a bunch of new ones at our next meeting. Does Teresa just have number six left? Um, Teresa's number six, yeah, I know. We shouldn't really torture her by asking her to stay. It's so my I'm... pleasure. <laughs> well, okay, I mean, how could we refuse that? Okay. Um, <clears throat> LWRP. So we do have a summary, a two page, copied onto one page front and back summary of the full application that we will be provided from our uh, consultant green plan. As you know, we discussed and uh, approved uh, going out to update our LWRP. And what you see is the result of his work on trying to figure out how much of a grant we need to ask for. You should know with this grant there's a 50% match. The good news is in-kind services are allowed. And he's come up with a project cost not to exceed $80,000. So we were looking for $40,000 from the state. And as you know, this is the Department of State, and they have suggested to us that it's time to update our local waterfront revitalization <coughs> plan. And so Here's the summary. Do you have any questions about it? If not, we can move right along into our approval. Oops, I'm not sure I have the resolution in my packet. Yeah, we got it. Sorry, I have it. Yeah. All right. Um, Sarah, would you like to read this resolution? Sure. Okay. Um, is this supporting the grant application? Yeah. Okay. Uh, resolution supporting the grant application to the Environmental Protection Fund um, for the Red Hook Local Waterfront Revitalization Program update. Whereas the town of Red Hook adopted a local waterfront revitalization program on May 2nd, 1995, and the plan was approved by the New York State New York Secretary of State with concurrence from the U.S. Office of Ocean and Coastal Resource Management. Whereas at the time the LWRP adoption, climate change, sea level rise, increased frequency and intensity of storms, and the resultant flooding from these weather-related changes had not yet but not as yet been recognized as a trend that will affect shifts in physical and social systems, such as agriculture, biodiversity, property damage from flooding and sea level rise, and water supply changes coming in the form of both gradual and rapid transitions related to climate change. And whereas the town of Red Hook wishes to apply to the EPF 
LWRP program for a grant to update the town's local waterfront revitalization program to mitigate future climate risks in the town of Red Hook, whereas this grant application requires the applicant municipality to obtain the approval of the governing body of the municipality. Now therefore be it resolved that the town board of the town of Red Hook does approve and endorse the application for grant in the amount of $40,000 under the EPF grant program for a project known as Red Hook Local Waterfront Revitalization Program Update and located within this pro community, the total cost estimated not to exceed $80,000 and the required 50% match to be funded by in-kind contributions. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there a second to that resolution? Second. Is there any further discussion? Okay, if not, all in favor? Aye. 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 So we'll thank you very much. And we will uh, also, as with the previous um, application, we'll get a copy of the full application um, when that is available in the next week or so. So those were the easy ones. Now we have um, the SAM grant, the State and Municipal Facilities Program grant. And as you recall, this is a $50,000, uh, essentially a member item, um, coming down from uh, our State Senator of Serino's office. Um, we were notified, and we have to submit a preliminary application this month, and then the uh, DASNI will send us the full application, and we were to think of, for the last couple of meetings, some ideas on what we could use those funds for. Obviously, we could use them many times over. Um, there's lots of applications. Um, I have been talking to both the fire companies, um, as you, uh, as I think we spoke about in the last meeting. The Red Hook Fire Company has an 18-year-old ambulance that is um, in need of replacement. They have started their um, campaign to raise funds. Um, they're selling raffles and they'll be sending out a letter to the community to ask for funds. And then whatever they receive, um, any grants, um, they will bond for the balance. The approximate cost is about $200,000 for a new ambulance. Um, I've also been speaking with the Tivoli Fire Company. They have some needs. They're not quite ready yet to identify where they could use some grant monies. So we might be looking next year at trying to see if we can assist them if that's something we so choose to do. Um, we also have um, some uh, recreation needs on our existing uh, rec parcels. Um, in particular, you'll see a memo from our Rec Commissioner uh, John Hume relating to the tennis courts. And so some of the thoughts we've had is perhaps uh, splitting the 50,000, maybe 25,000 towards um, the cost, which would be for next year, um, for redoing the tennis courts completely, and $25,000 towards um, the Red Hook Fire Company's ambulance as contributions knowing <coughs> that we can't fund, fully fund either one of those two things, but um, they are important needs. Now we could also do alternatively um, go out for the grant since this grant can be used for recreational facilities, the full, full $50,000 towards the tennis courts, but I, I would certainly uh, be reticent to do that without making some sort of commitment to the fire company that we um, increase the a capital contribution towards the ambulance because obviously that's a, a very important piece of equipment for our community and they are saving us a, an enormous amount of money by being a volunteer um, fire company. So I wondered if you had some thoughts about how we should allocate the money. Um, yeah. Bill. Well, I mean, I, I would think we, I thought the way I read that application was, you know, for uh, objects, you know, like an ambulance for a fire or police and not for fixing tennis courts. So does it water down the application to 
talk about uh, repairing tennis courts? Actually, that I'm, seems to be a pretty specific grant. Yeah, they, they talk about in the grant, um, I think you've had the, the attachment, but they talk about what eligible costs are, are, and actually it gets used a lot for recreational lands because there's a, a common thread through local communities of underfunding right now with a lack of development. So those those rec park fees are almost non-existent in most communities. So actually, it's being used often for rec land. It says, um, yeah, acquisition, construction, demolition, or replacement of a fixed asset. That's what a tennis court would be, right? Like a yeah, it needs to be 10 years, a 10 year life or greater. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I know John Kuhn believes that if we, that, so, so what happens just to give a little more detail on the tennis courts since our rec liaison Harry is, is not here tonight. Um, you may remember that the rec commission has had in the past to to patch the tennis courts because there's cracking that occurs just about every year. And um, that cost is about six thousand dollars, at least that's the most recent estimate we got this summer to do it. Um, and that's about, I think John thinks, every three years or so that we end up having to do that. But the recommendation from professionals who have reviewed the tennis courts is that if we were to demolish what's existing and re redo them with a different type of draining, that we wouldn't face those costs, you know, that the, the cracking would not occur. But of course, that whole project would be, I mean, I think. He, I've heard numbers like a hundred thousand, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, Obviously, we'd have to go out to bed. And yeah. So we'd have to bond. It's a pretty big bed. project, but for sure, if we could get some money toward it from some source like this, it would certainly help. But um, it, it keeps cracking each year as part of right. the problem, so we're throwing yeah. money at a improperly constructed. Yeah. Over course. time, it's going to cost us a lot of money. You know, it would be prudent to fix it at some point, but. Um, Well, I mean, my, my thought is to apply for both if somebody feels that we might reasonably be able to get fit, a total of 50000 for both those projects. Otherwise, focus just on the ambulance. On the ambulance, thought. okay. Um, all right, Jim, any, any thoughts? No, I, that makes sense to me. We could share, you know, 25. 25, 25, yeah. Of course, I was hoping not to have to manage two two separate items um, with one with the one grant. I don't know if there's going to be a lot of administration associated. Well, with then, this. is your thought to get off for of, of one of those projects this year? Perhaps, and perhaps. Year? Well, I guess my concern is I would want to make a commitment to both projects and either make a grant for one and then a commitment for the other. Like I can't see us not making a contribution towards the ambulance. That's a critical need for our community. Um, that one is a 99 vehicle model year, um, so it is 18 years old. And, uh, but their request is if we can get a grant for them. So you're saying if we do $50,000 for the tennis court and then give the fire company 25000 in addition to that? that yeah. That's not what's before us though, right? Well, no. This is. This is what I'm suggesting to you as a possibility, if you're comfortable with it. I, I, we can split the 50,000 grant, 25 and 25. I think it's just going to add to, you know, the management of these grants. And, and you'll, you'll start to see by the time well, July yeah. is over, we're going to have about 10 or 12 grants. In the fire there. company note, they, they said how they, they hope to have fundraising to come up with 50,000 themselves. So if that, that being the case, if we applied for the 50 to, to support the purchase of this ambulance this mm -hmm. year, number one. Number two, the, what is the exact status of the cracks in the tennis courts? Do they need repaired this year or can they wait till next year and then we can apply for the 50 to redo the tennis courts? Because yeah. I know we, we patch those cracks every two or three years, and I know I, I don't even recall exactly when we did it last. The Rec Commission decided not to patch it this year because it's something that they have to do each and every year. Um, we, we could do it, but they think by the time that we'll be wasting that money because by next year we'll have to redo it again. So then let's they'd rather we do it. To go towards the ambulance this year and apply next year to help us 
come up with the money to, to fund the re replacement of the tennis court. This will take the, the problem with this grant, though. It takes uh, a while. It takes a while. So if we apply for it now, we probably won't see money until May of next year, just to guess. Generally, it takes somewhere around eight to 14 months um, to, to receive this $50,000. So if we did want to, and there's a very narrow window when we can do the tennis courts, it's two weeks in August without interrupting all the schedules. And so we would need to have that $100,000 in place next year, summertime. And we can bond, obviously, um, to do that work. So there's, there's two ways we can do this. I'm, I'm pretty comfortable going either way. I just would like to, frankly, make a commitment to to contribute to both of them. So the, I mean, the thing, just to be clear, the thing, the thing is that if we give the money to the fire, if we if we try to get the ambulance, I mean, that's on their, it's their responsibility to raise the rest of the money that they need for that project. I mean, it's coming from Red Hook taxpayers or you know the people in that fire district or whatever funds they raise in addition to the grant. If we do the tennis court, whatever cost above whatever grant money we would give them, we're going to have to agree somehow to fund that. I mean, there's no, you know, we're the we're the one like our budget will bear that cost, you know. So if we are going for a grant for that, then we're basically, I mean, we're not exactly committing to redo the tennis courts, but do you know what I'm saying? Like it's sort of that's the direction we're going in. Right? I think I think we, I personally would like to commit to contribute to both of those mm -hmm. um, needs. Yeah, the question is how much? Beyond the grant? Well, we, you know, it's, don't we forget, don't, whatever, whatever the balance of the tennis supports. I thought we could only answer the, the, the question of what are we going to do with the 50000 right. The question at hand is just grant application, not our yeah. commitment. Well, to yes and no, but I, I guess what I'm saying is I would be very uncomfortable applying for a grant for $15,000 for a tennis court without us first making a commitment to contribute to the ambulance, which is really, uh, you know. Then, then you should vote to commit to the ambulance, frankly. Right? When is this that, anticipated purchase of the ambulance? Um, I think as soon as they can raise the money. So I think we're talking about, you know, and then they'll have to go out to bond. So, you know, the time frame for that could be several months, several months. They can certainly get short-term financing if, if we're waiting to see if we get the grant. I, I personally think it would make sense to actually apply for the tennis court because that's funds we don't need until 13 months from now. But I, I sure would not feel comfortable applying for all 50 without committing to making a, a $25,000 contribution towards the ambulance itself. And don't forget, we, are, we, we have to do this and stay within the cap and, and, and all of that. Um, we collect the fire taxes, and that's also subject to the cap. So th this is court money. Is this, is this one time this year and then uh, again next year? Is this I, something? I think the hope is that it happens again next year, but you don't know what happens in Albany and whether the, the decision makers will still be there or not. This is a program that was in place for several years. I think it stopped after 2013. It's back again for this year. Um, I think the hope is that it will be back next year, but like life, there's no guarantees. So what's the agenda well, item tonight? Well, then, then why don't we, you know, if, if we know we have to come up with the money, because this is what we have to do for the tennis courts, yeah. then why don't we apply for this 50000 grant as to cover 50% of the cost of redoing our tennis courses, apparently we have to do because mm -hmm. they're not worth patching anymore. Mm -hmm. And then in the meantime, let's sit down with the firemen and find out exactly what their schedule is on replacement of the ambulance, their fundraising, and, and you know, not commit, but you know, do it, see what we can do to help them with that. Albeit, even if it's you know, applying the same money, if it does appear again next year, towards that. Are there other Yeah, you know, we can't just, otherwise we can't, otherwise I don't see how we can, unless we put it in a grant. We can't, I, I don't think it's right for us to go and commit 25000 because they said they need a new ambulance. We negotiate these things when we do the contract. 
you know, how much we give them every other year. And, and before, personally before, I would commit the taxpayers' money short of this grant application, I would want to see and exactly ins and outs of their budget, which is, you know, at times a difficult thing when we're negotiating a contract. You know, that, that was my question years. too. Um, looking at this, yeah, that yeah, just to see all of the different ways that they're funding, you know, what what they have for their capital replacement for all kinds of equipment. Yeah, but the know, fire, just, the fire company. Yeah, right. What Jim is saying to see the budget. Well, all right. Uh, have we seen anything in writing about this tennis court? Yes, you have yeah. a memo from John. You should have it. Well, I mean, the, the, the other memo said they've already got fifteen thousand in the capital fund to redo the three ball fields. Right. But that's, that's, yeah, well, that's, what were they going to do separate. about the tennis courts? That's a separate thing. They, they were going to do nothing. They don't have the funds for that. Okay. Well, they were going to do nothing, or at the least a six thousand dollar patch job. You know, which if we don't do it this year, definitely would have to be done next year. I think their memo says no patch job. Right, but they have decided not to do it. Yeah, right. this year. Well. <laughs> Yeah, so I could go either way. One. Could go either way, but not both ways. So either I would vote to back the ambulance, or I'll vote to back the tennis court. That's okay, good. so the splitting at twenty-five, twenty-five, you're not okay with that anymore. Well, I mean, if, if you can do it, but it, doesn't that dilute the application? I don't know, maybe not. No, no, I, I, asked, I asked if you could do that. that I know, towards two different good projects. You think it would reinforce it? I, I don't know. It's maybe we'll you know, take I a shot so. at it. Yeah, I, I go for both. The only thing is it done it's a little more for Robert to manage because of the two yeah. applications. But or Ian, yeah. yeah. Or Ian. Right. So why don't we, you know, since they're both worthy causes, okay, and we can't we can't decide, you know, which one is is more worthy apparently in our discussion, and I, I really wouldn't be willing to commit a, a, a taxpayer obligation over and above that at this discussion because this, this is really about the grant. Then why don't we apply and you know for both which are worthy causes and seem to fit into the guidelines of this particular okay. member item pork. Okay, twenty-five each. Twenty-five each. Are we okay with that? Well, anyway, yeah. somebody makes that motion. So I'll make the motion. Um, Second. And I have a, uh, if I could just uh, interject for your, yes, please, for your uh, resolution uh, right. purposes, I have a resolution um, that you can fill in and yes. move the resolution Filling the town board right hereby approves the application for a state municipal facilities program grant for the following projects and the following amounts. Number one. Red Hook Fire Company, $25,000. Uh, for ambulance trucks, right? Yes, sir. For ambulance. A new ambulance. And then Red Hook uh, Rec Park uh, Tennis Court? Is that right? Uh, tennis Court Replacement mm -hmm. Project. For $25,000. $25, and the supervisor and the town's other officers, employees, and agents are hereby authorized and directed forward in the name and on behalf of the town to execute any documents that are necessary to facilitate the grant application. So. I so move as just read by the attorney for the town. <laughs> Second again. Thank you very much. Is there any uh, further discussion? I, I would just say I think that um, John and the Rec Commission are going to feel very um, pleased at this sort of um, gesture on the town board's part in support of projects that they have really put a lot of thought into and you know it's it's a it's a facility that does take a lot of management and time and there's a lot of moving parts and so I think I know I was just in their meeting last night and I think they'll just feel gratitude that we've at least you know been reading the memos and you know trying to find funding for for some yeah. of the deferred maintenance that they've really been you know looking to get funded so. indeed okay Thank you very much. Um, if there's no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 So, okay. Um, I just want to warn you that there are more grant applications coming up at the next meeting. I think we're going to try for one of these local government efficiency grants. I think I mentioned this to you all um, several meetings ago, but I think we might qualify for our new rec lands, that project, because it's an efficiency measure to share the 
new facility with the schools and the villages and um, to some extent even some other townships. So I intend to prepare for your consideration at the next meeting a $100,000 grant proposal to the state um, to help with that funding as well. Is that a matching grant? Um, in this case, I believe it's a 10% matching grant, so that would be terrific. And we do have to come up with dollars, the 10%, but we intend to come up with We've dollars anyway. Spent a lot there. Right. Yeah. Right. So, um, just forewarn, there is also um, a Cornell Cooperative Extension would like us to participate in a grant, a CFA grant. Um, relating to organic waste and whether or not there would be an expansion of Ulster County Resource Recovery Agency's facility just over the bridge and whether or not um, they would like to study whether or not we uh, want to do some collection of organic waste. I don't know if that will ultimately result in an application, but that also may be on the agenda for next month in the grant category. Leave no stone unturned. Okay, so um, if there's no other uh, discussion about grants, we can move on to uh, agenda item number five. That's a resolution to set public hearing for July 27th, 2016, acquisition of real property, recreation park annex, Linden Avenue West. The town um, has decided and has gone to contract to purchase a small parcel of land next to our new recreational parcel to create a better and safer um, entrance and a parking area to the facility that we are applying for uh, several grants to begin work on. And so um, we have a resolution to that effect, and I won't read the whole thing, but since you all have been kind enough to read the other resolutions tonight, it's a resolution dated July 2nd, establishing a date for a public hearing regarding July 12th. July 12th. Thank you. Establishing a date for a public hearing regarding use of monies in the Community Preservation Fund for the acquisition of Recreation Park Annex Parcel. Whereas the town has previously approved a contract of sale for the purchase of this parcel, whereas the town board will consider whether it's in the best interest of the town to use monies in the CPF fund to complete the purchase. Whereas the town board has previously determined that the purchase of such parcel is an unlisted action and adopted a negative declaration with respect to such purchase. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the town board of the town of Red Hook, by the favorable vote of not less than a majority of all the members of the board, as follows, that the town board shall hold a public hearing on July 27th, and would 7.35 be an agreeable time? Okay. Uh, to hear all interested parties on the proposed use of monies from the CPF fund for the acquisition of this parcel. And the town clerk is hereby authorized and directed to, public the, to publish the notices in the official newspapers on or before July, what is July? 17th, something 22nd. like that. July 7th? 22nd. It's fine, please. Okay. I think there's a ten day. It's not a. So it's not a. Twenty seventh. When is when is the public hearing? Twenty seventh. Our next meeting. Seven. Twenty seventh. Seven thirty-five. Twenty seventh. July twenty seventh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and the town clerk is hereby authorized and directed to refer the proposed purchase to the community preservation fund advisory board for their review. I don't know that that's the town clerk who is referring the purchase. Well, I think would not be the town board. Right, but she'll send the okay package to them as usual. Okay, you want to keep the town board um, for the review or recommendation. And my understanding is they've already set up a meeting date for um, next Tuesday. I think. So um, that's the proposed resolution. Is there a second? 
Is there any further discussion? Okay, hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Um, Teresa, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed sticking around for us. And we're finally on your agenda item. Number six is a request to amend the driveway permit bonding. Would you want to say something about that? Yes, would you please read what we have in front of us? Uh, to Robert McKean and the town board. The town of Red Hook Highway Department recommends increasing the driveway permit bond from $1,000 to $2,500. We would also like the driveway permit to be renamed as a road access slash driveway permit. There are times when there is the need for temporary access by a contractor and we inspect after their work is done to make sure the road edge is intact and has not been damaged by their activity. This bond is held in escrow until the driveway or road access is completed to the town of Red Hook specifications. The increase amount reflects the increase in material and labor costs to the town. If driveways are not done to specs, there can be significant road damage or remediation expenses. So I guess in 1994, it was $1,000, and we figured we'd upgrade the cost. We have some people who are not finishing their projects, and we feel that part of it is because they're only being charged $1,000 if they walk away, and it might cost the highway department a lot more than that to fix their mistakes. Um, I think that it would be time, and also uh, we have trouble with just the driveway permit name because sometimes it's just a temporary access, and we'd like to have that included in the application to simplify it. Okay. Questions? Do I have any questions about the request? No. Jim? No. Seems okay to you. Now. Is there legal? We're all set with the resolution for the board to consider. Okay. And Thank you. And yep. For the record, this is a minimum amount that's um, in our fee schedule, in our highway specifications. Do you, if you said it's a minimum. Do you yep. have a way of deciding what the escrow amount should or the bond? What is this a bond? It's a bond. Yeah. yeah. So well, it can be higher than this? It can okay. be higher depending on the amount of activity, the size of the vehicles, the scope of work. So the minimum for anyone, and it is an escrow bond. If they complete the work, then they get their money back. The application fee remains the same, but it's just the deposit that they put up okay. um, to ensure that the road is returned to us in the condition that they found it first. And okay. the deposits are held by the town for the Yes. Okay. Well, very good. Um, would somebody like to uh, briefly summarize the resolution? Would you like me to do that? Oh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. So, this uh, resolution is a resolution uh, adopting an amendment to the highway specifications. Uh, the town highway specifications, and this references the last amendment, October 14, 2014. Uh, provide minimum and maximum standards for construction and maintenance of highways. Uh, the ha town highway superintendents recommended the amendment of the highway specifications. Um, it is hereby determined that this is a type two action, not requiring any further review under seeker. Uh, so the resolution is as follows. Section 10.9 entitled driveway bond of the highway specifications is hereby amended to read as follows. Section 10-9 entitled road access slash driveway permit. Um, and then the section goes on to read exactly as it says in the current version of that highway permit uh, section uh, uh, with the change to one sentence, in no event will the bond be less than $2,500. Um, and the town clerk is directed to append the amendment to the town of Red Hook highway standards on file in her office and to send notice of such adoption to the town highway superintendent. Um, and the, uh, the existing uh, road access driveway permit provision then says that um, those entrances must be built in conformance with the uh, driveway permit issued by the superintendent and a, and a driveway bond is required to be posted. Um, uh, if there are any other, uh, um, uh, the surety uh, is uh, required to be posted prior to the issuance of the permit by the highway superintendent, right? Okay. Well, thank you, Bill. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any further discussion? 
Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 So well, thank you very much. Thank you, Chris, for preparing it. And thank you, Teresa, for giving it to us in writing. Um, item number seven is a uh, return of the uh, discussion incentive zoning amendment. We uh, discussed making some changes to the existing incentive zoning law to allow developers to pay that incentive fee in phases as they phase, as they file the phases for the mm -hmm. development. That was sort of the major change. There are some um, other minor changes. And Chris, did you want to bring to the board's attention any particular changes that you've been working on? Um, so, um, right, we do have the major change, which is uh, paying in installments, uh, rather not installments, but paying in, uh, in phased uh, applications. Uh, we still have a uh, provision for that uh, amount to have a yearly adjustment based on uh, the median uh, price. We made a small adjustment in how that's done to try to make it easier for the clerk's office to track that with the um, uh, with the median house price. Price we're trying to uh, make it easier to uh, keep a record of that amount as it's issued. Um, and. Uh, we have several examples, hopefully, to <laughs> make it easier to administer that. Uh, there will be some tracking for a phased project. It'll be important for the clerk's office and the uh, and the building department to keep track of the uh, portion of the project that's been paid. Um, and we have some mechanisms built into this uh, provision of the law to try to make sure that that will happen. The goal tonight, I think, is to, to review those changes and, and perhaps consider at our next meeting setting a public hearing. We won't do that tonight. Um, but is this the final draft, then? It should be. This I'm is the latest. So this is the, re this is the result of your work and uh, Michelle's? Sure. And, uh, and Jennifer's input, or what? Absolutely. The attorney for uh, the mm -hmm. project. Right. So all three, uh, two, two attorneys and the planner have agreed on this. To the best of my knowledge. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. So you, you accept all of this? From a textual perspective, sure. I mean, whatever, whatever the attorney for the project recommended and what you counter-recommended. Right, we serve the language to the point where we think that it's clear um, you know what's intended. So they may not be happy, they being the project, but but they'll accept this language. Is that the idea? That is my understanding. I did check with Jennifer today just to make sure that she understood what the scope of this particular draft was, and she understands this particular draft. So at the public hearing, are we going to have a demonstration? Do you think, or what? I have no the project. No idea. No, I, I don't. I don't think so. No, no I, think I think they're agreeable to these changes. I spoke to the developer a couple I mean, months back, and yeah, I think he understood that, that this was the only way. No, I think he's fine with those changes. So procedurally, for you to consider this, um, this will be an amendment uh, uh, to your zoning law. So we will need to, number one, we'll need to have Michelle prepare um, an EAF for this. Uh, and then we will want to go through the referral process um, and call a public hearing. So perhaps I believe Michelle will be available to uh, prepare that for your next meeting and we could start the process at the next meeting. Um, I think we would want to have you declare lead agency so that you can yeah. do it in a coordinated review. Um, it would be most uh, uh, probably uh, um, useful to do that, I would think. So again, what is the next thing you want us to do? Your well, next just to review this and just to review maybe, maybe if there are any, any last changes, right. let's do it between now and then. I, you know, I frankly only have one question, which is related to how we calculate the uh, the changes, because I noticed in trying to do a little research on another topic that the median house sale in certain communities departs from the county median. 
so I wonder if we have a mechanism to actually track what the median is in the other. But well, we, we, we don't refer to that. We refer to the median house price in the discounted no, I understand part of the law. No, I understand that, but I wonder okay. if, that, if that's a good thing or a bad thing for us when we're calculating. You know, it, 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 it makes it easier, I understand. Right. I mean, I think it would also be subject to higher swings. I would think you would want to think about that, that there is a certain amount of smoothing that happens um, when you're looking at a larger database versus, you know, a single sale in a community that's a fairly small community can, that can then have a skewing impact for some period of time. So. You know, what not generally so much for median, for average, yeah, but for median, not, not as much. But I understand your point. But seeing how many transactions are, you know, and I get copies of all the transfers of the properties, it's, it's really quite impressive how many homes are selling in our community. Anyway. But that's just really a whole different subject because now we've, the whole thing was based on the county median when the law was drawn up, and now yeah. we're just modifying how the developer would pay us, and allowing them to phase That's it rather than all up front. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it at the county. Yeah. Right. But just, just two quick things. This is coming out of escrow, right, for the project? You mean the work on the project? The payments to the lawyers and the planners. Well, don't forget, this law applies not for one project. This applies for all the projects that right. incentive zoning is eligible for. So there's a certain amount of um, escrow fees that can be charged, but that the work that's done for updating our, our law is really... But we're doing it for the project. Well, well not. Bill, I would say work on the, on the certainly work on the uh, review of the specific project has been under escrow, but there have been discussions and, and work that is, I think, generic um, yeah. in nature, so... Yeah. And has the planning board uh, understood this? Yeah. Understood what? Um, and should we send it to them or have we Well, that them? will be part of your review process. We'll be sharing that with the planning board. Time. Well, this is really, this is about payment of incentive zoning fees. It's not so much right. about I mean, the I plan. I think it's they're aware of the discussion in terms of actually the amounts of the payments. I think that's, um, yeah. you know. So what's the next thing you want to do? So at the next meeting, in between now and the next meeting, if there are any questions yeah. about the content or, or mm -hmm. the text of the law, if you could reach out to me or Michelle, um, and uh, perhaps authorize Michelle to prepare uh, environmental assessment uh, forms for the next meeting so that you'd be in a position to uh, call the public hearing at that time. On oh, the 27th? Mm -hmm. Right. Who's going to give it to possible? Harry, me or anybody else? I'm going to see him later to speak that Would you give it to him? Yeah. Oh, he has it. Yeah, he has it. Anyway, yeah. but well, you better give it to him. Just I'll just, I'll just, I'll just recap what he our discussion was tonight, so he's ready for okay. whatever he's. He doesn't know he's part of the church. All right. Is there any other discussion on item number seven? Um, okay. So very briefly on correspondence, we just have a letter from uh, Charter Communications talking about their completed merger with Time Warner, and they give us a new. Um, representative and so it begs the question should we um, try again to get a new contract with now charter communications and not time warner as you know our existing um, agreement with them expired a few years ago and the thinking was that we might not get a better contract supposedly but i think it's worth a shot should really be up to them to reach out to us right well, if I think not, then we should reach to Well, yeah. that's what that letter says? Well, that's the letter is, hi, we've merged, and I'm your new representative. So mm -hmm. we'll, uh, with your permission, I'll give them a call and see if we can perhaps at least have beginning negotiation to see Start where we where can come we off. Yeah. Um, the other uh, correspondence I have, and I apologize, it's not in your folder, but just as a reminder, I think I spoke about it briefly at the last meeting had some um, written correspondence and phone calls related to zoning for uh, solar farms. As you know, it's not an indicated use in our code, and so we really do, we have uh, folks who want answers from us about where we're going to 
allow it and to what scale and under what conditions. And so um, that's something that hopefully uh, at our next meeting we could start to look at some initial language and, and uh, we can get some input from, from all of you in our CAC. Um, Shouldn't the ZRC look at that or no? Um, it's quite possible the ZRC. I, I, I know that you know, the ZRC does, does meet occasionally. Um, right now they're taking up a couple of other items on their agenda. But um, that would be a thing for them to look at. We're talking about modified zoning. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. That's yeah. Why we created them to? Yeah. yeah, it's just kind for of, that purpose. Kind of in our tradition. Okay. okay. Well, we can do all of the above. Okay. Yeah. But it's something we we should get started with because people want answers from us on on that topic. I don't have uh, any other correspondence to uh, share with you tonight. Uh, does anyone else have anything before we go into the second public comment period? I think we didn't um, do announcements in the beginning, but right. so this is more of an announcement. But okay. I just noticed you probably saw also in your email that there's going to be a concert in the park in front of Linden Avenue Middle School on August 2nd. So I just want to get that in there now mm -hmm. for the people watching at home. Yep. I don't have the time, but. I'm assuming it'll be in the evening, like six or seven or something like that. But it'll be the Rhinebeck American Legion band, and that's always a fun outdoor summer yeah. activity. So August second at Linden Avenue Middle School. What day uh, is that of the week? That's a good question. Tuesday. It's in the middle of the week, yeah, maybe Tuesday or yeah. something like that. And the Red Hook Library is having porch concerts. Right. I suggest if you're interested, you go on both websites, the Red Hook Public Library or Tivoli. Um, they have tons of events. Um, it would take us too long to, to list them all, but... Um, I think, yeah, their concerts are last Fridays of the month, so yeah. whenever that is, the 30th, I think. Right, and Art Days at St. Margaret's starts on the 15th, um, so, and goes through the 24th, so if you're watching this at home, it's already started, and uh, we'll be... Um, up and running until the following weekend. Okay, very good. Um, public comment period again at the end, Linda? Okay. Yeah. I have a question about item five. Yeah. I thought under Supervisor Gilfeather, we bought that property for $400,000. Oh, I'm sorry, Linda. Let me clarify. And, yeah. and I think that we have a document in front of us. It is a 1.09 acre parcel, That's which right. is just north of the parcel that we acquired. So there's an additional area right on Limited Avenue that's come up for sale and that the town board is interested in purchasing because of the proximity to that recreation parcel. So it would be an enhancement in addition to the entrance area for that for that parcel. Exactly. It's, right. it's going to improve the, the sight parcel. lines. It's yeah. going to improve the sight lines for the driveway right. coming in. Right. Yeah. And Part of the property they didn't want to sell us when they sold us the initial west yeah. right. piece. The same there. owners. But they've same since owners. changed their mind. Yeah. Yeah. That was back in 2007. Right. Purchased yeah. the 28 acres. They have good memory. Yeah. <laughs> Except there wasn't lot. Bill Feather though back then. I think it was Meredith. But yeah. But yeah. The other thing I want to say is that uh, aside from the wonderful accomplishments we've made here with the ADA, uh, Poets Walk is going to be upgraded. Mm -hmm. um, it'll have a bathroom, mm -hmm. handicap. Mm -hmm. It'll have uh, a kiosk that you can go around and it's be paved. It'll have uh, van accessible parking. Mm -hmm. It'll have additional trees and, and better parking for everyone. And the entranceway will be paved. So it's going to make an improvement for everyone. Oh, and that hill will be taken out. It'll be a, a, a very a gentle, a gentle slope going up. Who's, who's doing that work? Is that Cindy Cousin? Cindy Cousin. As a matter of fact, today it's closed, and tomorrow yeah. it's closed right. for the work to be done. It took me three years. That's right. Yep. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Then. All right. Um, if there are no other public comments, I would like to make a motion that we go into attorney client to discuss uh, the potential acquisition of a parcel of land, a particular parcel of land. If there's, um, is 
there a <coughs> second to that motion? Second. Thank you. That was a little bit too much suspense there. Uh, no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you all for watching.